in State of Wisconsin versus Katrina Bauer, 24 CF 163. Appearances by Zoom. State appears by Jacqueline Labrie. Katrina Bauer appears by Zoom from the Manitowoc County Jail with her attorney, Ann Larson. Uh, matters on the calendar for a bail motion today. Um, attorney Larson originally filed, uh, let me find it here, a bail motion back on April 19th, and then there was an amended bail motion filed on the 29th. Attorney Labrie, did you have an opportunity to review both of those? Yes, Judge, I had received the original bail motion, and then late last night, I received the other one. All right, Attorney Larson, go ahead. Your Honor, um, Ms. Bauer is not able to post the $15,000 cash bond. She is asking that the court order a signature bond. I did note in my amended um, bail motion that I would like to have the address uh, of her location sealed. I think it's important for the court to know what it is uh, for the purposes of bail. I did leave the address with the court's judicial assistant. I also did email the proposed address to Ms. Labrie. Um, it is a Manitowoc County address, which I think is the more important part. Judge, in the past, she's had two uh, disorderly conduct misdemeanor cases and two um, CTOAR cases. In 2011, uh, 11CM993 and 15CM648, she never missed any court. In 17 CT 236, there was a bench warrant authorized on June 21st of 2017, but on June 23rd of 2017, it was withdrawn and she did appear. In 17 CT 752, Adegemi, all our Adegemi cases except for 11 CM 993, which is at Winnebago. 17 CT 752, there were a number of misses. There was a bench warrant authorized on February 2nd of 2018, which was canceled on February 9th of 2018. There was a bench warrant issued May 17th of 2018, which in, and the uh, signature bond was reinstated on May 23rd. Additionally, there was a warrant issued August 15th and she was in custody. The, Signature bond was allowed to continue on October 19th. And finally, there was a bond on November 7th with a return on November 15th. During that particular case, she was in a domestic violence situation and was not able uh, at different times to leave her home. But as I stated, she did meet, she did make all of her future, uh, or all of her court appearances prior to that. Ms. Bauer has no significant assets. She does receive SSI and has received some assistance from her family, uh, but she does plan on living in town. She will comply with any conditions as set forth by the court, including um, signing in a daily sign-in. Uh, but again, she is not capable of, of posting bond right now. I would indicate, I believe that this is a class H felony. So I don't think a signature bond is out of order under these circumstances. We are asking that the court grant our request. Those are all of the remarks that I have, Judge. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Labrie. Judge, first of all, I know there is at least one victim representative that wants to make a statement. I don't know at what point in the hearing you would like to hear from them. Uh, after you. Okay. The state is opposed to a signature bond in this case. Um, this is a felony matter. It is an extremely serious case. As attorney Larson just detailed, the defendant does have prior um, convictions out of Outagamie and Winnebago County. She has the one missed court appearance in 17 CT 236. And then in 17 CT 752, she's got the four missed court appearances including one of them being a plea hearing on August 14th of 2018, where the warrant was authorized and she didn't return till several months later. Um, she has shown that she's got the inability to make court dates with those missed court appearances, as well as um, she has the four prior cases. She does not have local ties. 
the address that I was provided literally a minute before the hearing is not a stable address. Um, I won't say what it is, but it is not a stable address. It is in Manitowoc County, but I don't think it is an appropriate placement for her to reside. Um, she has no other contacts. My understanding is the family is primarily out of Manitowoc County. I don't feel that there is enough stability with the proposed location for this to be modified to a signature bond, especially with the seriousness of this case. I think cash is still appropriate. Uh, furthermore, as far as the second part of the request um, that was filed regarding the lifting of the no contact, uh, I received that last night. I did contact that county this morning. I was informed that that matter is still pending, that they were unaware of that this request was going to be made until I called them this morning. And at this point in time, they are not in favor of it. Um, they haven't really been in communication with her recently. So at this point, they are not uh, supporting that request. And we would ask that that second request also be denied. And as I had indicated before, Judge, I know there is at least one Vu family member that would like to make a statement. All right, I'll get to them in just a second. I was going to ask Attorney Larson about uh, touching on the uh, part of the motion, the amended motion that dealt with uh, contact with the minor child. So, uh, Attorney Larson, go ahead. Judge, um, we have different information than Ms. Labrie has, but I appreciate the fact that I only filed the motion late yesterday afternoon. So what I would propose would be to um, withdraw the motion for today and refile to give the parties time to get information so that the court can make an informed decision. Okay. And uh, uh, so the member of the victim's family that wishes to make a statement, and all I need you to do right now is unmute uh, and I'll be able to tell uh, who it is that wants to speak. Okay. Uh, the panel marked as Orson Vu. Uh, unmuted. So uh, first, I need you to state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yes, uh, Orson Vu, O-R-S-O-N-V-U-E. All right, go ahead and tell me what you care to, sir. Your Honor, we are asking that the court deny an, any request by Katrina Bauer to reduce or modify her current bond. She is the mother of Elijah and is the main reason for all this that has happened. She has allowed Elijah to suffer the abuse and neglect that he went through and seeing her baby with all bruised up and not doing anything to help him and instead taking a picture and then deleting it is ab absolutely disgusting. Katrina needs to be held fully accountable for a lack of care for Elijah. And until we find out where Elijah is or what happened to Elijah, her whereabouts and avail availability needs to be known at all times. And there truly is a concern from everyone, especially our family, that she will be a flight risk. And we, we trust that the court will make the right decision and give Elijah the justice he deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so a couple things. First of all, uh, since Attorney Larson is withdrawing the portion of the motion dealing with contact with the minor child, the court uh, for today's purposes um, won't address that. Um, and as far as, con uh, excuse me, as far as uh, amending the bond goes um you know it's difficult to gauge this case on the scale with uh uh the prior kinds of cases uh she's had on her record um they're not the same uh this would be an entirely different situation if uh the child in question were here uh, he's not um, you know, and I don't know what that means in terms of, you know, the context of this and, uh, the law taking a long view of, of the case here. Um, but it, it's a significant factor. I mean, she's charged with, uh, you know, a party to the crime, uh, neglect of the child and the child is missing. Um, she's not from here, um, you know, and as far as the local address goes, whether or not the state has concerns with it, um, she could have what 
could be considered by anyone to be a solid address uh, in this county, and it really wouldn't make that much difference in terms of uh, the weight I give it as a factor. Um, what I consider in this case, uh, it, and, and the other thing is this, I want to touch on this. Um, it's difficult to attempt to manage this case uh, and, and the request for bail um, like we would normally. Um, you know, Attorney Larson mentions that she'd be willing to comply with uh, uh, a daily check-in at the jail. Um, the reality of the situation is that would defeat the purpose of sealing her proposed address. Um, for anyone to think that she could go anywhere in this county and not be followed by somebody, um, I don't think you're living in reality. And, you know, at that point, you know, there's no control over uh, what might happen. Um, and that's not to say that, uh, you know, I think she needs to be kept in, kept on bond as set uh, for her safety. Uh, it just means I don't necessarily have control over it. And I don't know, um, you know, were I to set a daily check-in, um, if I didn't feel safe going to the jail to check in, um, I don't know that I would. And then I end up back here having to deal with that. And that's not a situation I want to find myself in. Um, the reality is there's too much at stake. There are too many unanswered questions. Uh, that all goes on the scale and leads me to believe that uh, if she were released into the county, she would uh, pose a significant risk of not appearing for court um, when scheduled. I don't at this point think there's uh, a manner in which I could um, reasonably and appropriately control that uh, through the use of bond. So for those reasons, the court will deny the motion. I'll ask Attorney Labrie to draft uh, the order. Um, and I guess Attorney Labrie, for the sake of uh, the order, um, if you just want to use language that denies the bail motion that was filed on um, April 19th, since Attorney Larson technically is withdrawing the other motion, uh, and we may take that up at a later point, um, I don't want there to be any confusion as to whether uh, the denial today is a denial of that request uh, since it's been withdrawn. Okay? Yes, Judge. All right, then uh, let me just see. We don't have anything else set. So uh, have the parties talked about what you're looking to have set as far as the next date? Do you want an additional uh, uh, further proceedings deadline? Do you want a status conference? What are you looking for here? And I'll start, I guess, with Attorney LaBrie. Judge, there is a significant amount of discovery that we have provided to Ms. Larson. Um, I believe it was provided to her on a hard drive last week. I don't know how long she's going to need to go through that discovery. Attorney Larson, what are your thoughts as far as uh, setting the next date? Judge, given the fact that she's in custody and we'll be unable to um, post, we're going to need to work on this as quickly as we can. I'm going to ask for a status hearing in two weeks. Uh, let me see what I've got. I can do just a shade over that. I can do uh, May 22nd at uh, 2.30 or 4. Judge, I... I am out of the office that week, but if it is only just a status, I could appear by Zoom. Judge, if the court has something available the following week, that's fine. Um, four o'clock on the 28th? That works for the state. That's fine. All right. So we'll set a status conference by Zoom then for four o'clock on the 28th. Uh, Attorney Larson, are you going to want um, your client made available for that, or are you anticipating it's just going to be the court and the attorneys? Um, I think it'll. I, we're fine with just the court and the attorneys. All right, real good. Uh, anything else for the record today then from the state? 
No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Larson? No, Your Honor, thank you. Then we're adjourned.